I am Helmine from Armenia and I work in Casa Swiss Humanitarian Foundation, which works in various domains. And uh, since 2013, we also work in the sphere of youth work. And we established various youth clubs. And we prepare uh, junior facilitators in frames of the youth clubs. And uh, I am mainly the youth worker dealing with these youth clubs, being a mentor for the young facilitators, being a coach, being a friend, I don't know, for them to lead the youth clubs in a very useful, positive and educational way. Before, when the youth clubs were only in uh, Gyumri and Yerevan, the two big cities in Armenia, we were mainly using messenger because this is very quick to reach the young people, to communicate around the questions that are of our interest. And now we extended the geographical area of the youth clubs and we established in the northern part um, of Armenia the youth clubs in the southern part and we asked the young people which communication channels are the most useful ones for you so that we can reach you very easily and you respond very quickly. Yeah. And it came out that also WhatsApp, Viber, Instagram are very handy for them to use for calling, group calls, for reaching us as a team of the project to ask questions, etc. So th this is the first time that we use various communicate, various chatting channels, mainly WhatsApp, Viber, Instagram, and Messenger. This is very difficult. Me, as a youth worker, I had to adapt myself, my working methods to the needs of the young people to reach them very quickly. And I have in my phone and in my computer all the apps. Before, I only had the messenger, but now like everything is combined. With certain areas, like I go to the northern part of my region, and in this part, mainly WhatsApp and Viber are very actual. And it has its reasoning because we have the uh, very uh, big percentage of migration from my region, and all of the young people have have people that are outside of the country doing a job in Russia, for example, and they communicate with their family member outside with Viber and WhatsApp. So th these are the apps that they have in their phones. Other applications are very hard for them to have a place in their phones, yeah, like Zoom or Skype. I suggested them to have Zoom, but this was very difficult for them because during the pandemic also the classes were online with the zoom application and they were so much tired that for the youth work the volunteer activities that they were having zoom was already something very official <laughs> and they preferred whatsapp and viber sometimes i have to to yeah as i said adapt myself to the needs of the young people okay you use whatsapp let's do it and then Sometimes, yeah, for me, it was easier to use Messenger because before also the working method was via Messenger. <laughs> I started to keep this uh, old tradition. Uh, sometimes it works with them. Sometimes, no. Mainly, I am the person who adapts to their needs. WhatsApp, okay, WhatsApp. Instagram, the group call is very, with limited amount, but if they prefer Instagram and they have this amount of people, okay, then it's fine. The limitations are that you are not, if you are having a group call and me as a youth worker has to explain something, then also it's very effective for me to share my screen and explain something, yes? For WhatsApp and Viber, for example, I cannot share my screen because I mainly use my, my phone for this. And for the messenger recently, I discovered that you cannot share the screen, but you can, th there is a place where you can also make notes and the one that is sharing with you the messenger can see, can see your notes. This was easy for me to explain something. For Instagram, to tell the truth, I didn't know that it's possible uh, group calls, <laughs> but due to the young people, I discovered that we can have a nice chat with um, 
maximum eight people. <laughs> uh, it worked. Challenges is, of course, the quality of the call sometimes. And, and it also, for example, if we use uh, Zoom, then everybody is very responsible to be in the Zoom. But WhatsApp, for example, they do not feel the responsibility to be in the chat the whole duration and they can come out, uh, come again, or keep the uh, conversation at all. You cannot keep the control of people to be in the chat and the presence of the people in the chat is the effectiveness, yeah, guarantees the effectiveness of what you organize. And for the Viber, for example, the young people mainly use to share, I don't know, GIFs, pictures. Maybe I can mention the quality of the chat and the quality in both term, in terms of the internet quality and the quality of the things that you are organizing with the young people. It's not effective. Sometimes I give some tips to the young people during the online work. Mainly I take the role of moderator and I ask somebody to take the notes and then the person is responsible to share the picture of the notes in the chat. Uh, or not the picture, but just the, the quick notes in the messenger, whatever they had. This keeps the the work quality in the level that I want, but again, it's not like the guarantee of what we want to do. Because again, that when the young people are behind the camera, that sometimes they are just sitting there with no interest, just providing their presence, but not really very active interference into the work that we're doing. So giving the roles somewhat <coughs> saves the situation for them to be active in the activities, to be also responsible for what they do. And sometimes also I ask the young people to take the initiative of organizing the calls via whatever application they want. They suggest the time and I adapt my schedule according to the time that they suggested and the, they initiate the call. And this really works when they are the initiators. It didn't came up as a topic, but always when the young people want to take the pictures and share them via social media, we always encourage them first to ask the, the other people if they want to be in the picture and they want their data to be shared and then take the pictures and share. And the online activities that we did, we, I, I always explain them that also within the Republic of Armenia constitution, there is this article of safety, of data sharing, information and picture sharing. So let's follow this constitutional right, yeah? And not violate any rights and responsibilities of other people. And we also created games, board games about the constitutional rights, and they played they, these games in their during their activities, and they know this very well, so they do not share anything in social media. If they do not ask the people they want to uh, appear in the social media or not. About their personal pictures, whenever we had online activities, they asked, is this meeting going to be rec recorded and shared? If we say, we always ask, you, do you want us to record the, the meeting and share? If they said no, then no sharing. And if they did, if it was like necessary for us to share the recorded uh, meeting, but somebody didn't want to appear in the window, we asked them uh, either not to participate or to close their uh, profiles. Yeah. Yeah, the communication channels that I mentioned have been so far very useful for not a uh, really serious job, but like the young people preferred more entertainment for uh, if there were some online activities. So let's have entertainment, not serious jobs. 
For example, sometimes I encouraged the youth groups during the lockdown when everybody was at home just to organize meetings, to see each other, and just to chat how the things are going for each person, how they feel, how they, what they do at home in general, and not speaking anything about serious jobs. Okay, you are volunteering the project, you are going to be a facilitator, how are the things? Because during that time, nobody cared about serious things. <laughs> uh, serious things were via Zoom, the uh, online classes, which were very hard. And the young people also needed adaption during this time. Before, they didn't have any online activity. And now everything was online. online. The life was online. And uh, they differentiated like Zoom for serious things, entertainment via chatting applications. And they considered also volunteering uh, in the youth club project as an entertainment so I had to meet their suggestions. Okay, we do not do anything uh, about the youth clubs. So let's have a group call and just chat whatever we want or just organize a Kahoot game just for playing, yeah, just for having fun. This was the analysis so far. As there are conversations about making some of our activities digital or mixed because we saw that now, nowadays, we cannot have a long-term planning in a face-to-face -face environment. And we have to, to consider both realities, online and face-to-face. -face. And youth club activities that we have been doing for years, now we are planning to have the digitalized version. For example, young people in the youth club, after finishing their volunteering experience, they do some youth initiative and they get funding from us. During the pandemic, nobody cared about doing their initiatives and do, doing their having the funding. But now we think that we will have online activities, online tasks, like games, yeah, like scavenger hunt, where they will have the task and then we will use the open badges, they will get the badge, which will also correspondingly bring them the corresponding coins, and then the coins will turn into real money, and then after several months, they will have this real money in their hands, and realize their initiative. This is the plan that we are going to um, experience in this period. And we will see if this digitalized and gamification version of the youth clubs will work. We think that it will work because during the lockdown, yeah, during this year, young people got adapted to the situation that they want or they do not want. The activities are online. And so now they take online activities as for granted. It comes from my experience before, like I am in the chatting groups, but every time it comes a message and sometimes I, I become lazy to check the messages. And then I thought uh, there was a moment that I lost the chain. I lost the connection with the young people. And then now, now I reset my communication methods and like the promise for myself is to be always active, to check the chats, no matter how much difficult it is to follow every kind of message, yeah? But be not losing the contact and communication with the young people is to be always uh, checking the messages. You cannot respond to every kind of message because in the group chat, sometimes they are talking in between, not specifically with me. But being aware what they talk is really not losing the chain of communication with the young people. And also not being behind as a youth worker of some digital tools that nowadays are appearing every day and the young people are very active. As I said before, I was also in Messenger and then I discovered that there are also other things. 